everyone, my name is Patricia Sidney Mihaskel of BSA 21 and I will be serving as your guide for these next topics. Okay, so the question is, what are operating systems? This is actually a really silly question, seeing as all of us use OSs every time we use the computer. Life for us would be very hard otherwise. Now to show how OSs work, we shall use this simple diagram. This big line circle represents the user. This diagram will be showing us exactly what happens when the user uses a computer to do things. The user uses application software. This can refer to any application that the user wants to make use of. For example, the video editor and audio recorder that I'm using to make this APP right now are both application software. The operating system serves as an intermediary between applications and hardware, making it sort of like a middleman in layman's terms. Like I said earlier, without an OS, using a computer would be much harder than it's supposed to be. There are many examples of OSs, many of which would sound familiar to all of us. These examples would be enumerated in much more detail. In the middle of everything is the hardware. See how the OS is the one holding the hardware and applications together? Because of the OS, the data that the user had input into the application is now saved by the hardware for present or future use. An OS has three main functions. It's the one responsible for managing the computer's resources. It coordinates everything so that when the user needs a certain piece of hardware, it will be ready for usage. It also establishes a user interface. There are two kinds of UI, which I shall discuss in data. And like I said earlier, the OS executes and provides services for application software, serving as the ever-present middleman. Take note that an OS and system software are not the same thing, however. System software refers to all programs that are related to coordinating computer operations, and OSs are just one example. Now, the most important part of an OS is the kernel. It manages the operating system from behind the scenes. It's called a resident program, and it's always in use. It loads into many other OS programs, non-residents, when they're needed. The man creates supply when it comes to these non-residents, if you will. When an OS is loaded into memory, it is called booting, or less commonly known as bootstrapping. Notice how a computer doesn't always open immediately, and you would have to be staring at boot screens for a few seconds, or at most a minute, before the log on screen loads. That's called booting. The OS is pulling itself up by its bootstraps to get going, so to speak. I said earlier that an OS is the middleman between an application software and hardware, but you as a user can actually directly communicate with the OS and you do it every day. There are two kinds of user interfaces, UIs, and one of them is our constant companion. It's called a graphical user interface, one of the great marvels of computer innovation. You see, because of a GUI, we are able to issue commands by the way of images and menus. If you want to open Microsoft Word, you simply click this icon. If you want to play a video, you simply press play and immediately play plain and simple. A GUI is extremely user-friendly and it's the UI most commonly used by people of all ages. Even my little brother can upload a GUI with some level of success and he's one year old. So, on the other hand, command line user interface, which has been in existence much longer than a GUI, is usually used for large computer operating systems. It's basically much harder to use in a GUI, seeing as you have to type a number of commands to do what you might have been able to do with a few icon clicks in a GUI. Suffice to say, it's not everyone's first choice for a UI, but there still remain some programmers who use it. One of the examples of command line user interface is MS-DOS, which I should be talking if you see them in retail stores, software is sorted by which platform it can run. And by platform, I am referring to the combination of OS and hardware that the software can run on. It's usually indicated by a list of specs in the back of our software disk cover, which specify whether the software runs on a dual core Intel PC, on a Mac, on a PC running Windows 7 Professional. Now, users don't normally pay much attention to the OS system they use. 
They choose their hardware and applications carefully, but not their OSs. This is actually a good thing, but seeing as the OS that you choose would also determine by default the programs you are able to install, it would be preferred if a user would choose an OS with as much attention as he chooses his video game installers. We go to the next topic, the main example of a command line user interface, like I said earlier. MS-DOS was introduced in the early 80s and still persists up to this day. Though it has long since gone out of vogue with the introduction of the easier, more user-friendly GUIs like Windows and Apple. Here's an example of a typical MS-DOS window. When you first open it, it's in a window now, but back then this actually used to be the primary user interface of computers. You are immediately greeted by a blank dark screen with white text in the command box. Execute a DOS program, naturally, you have to input a command, seeing as it is a command line user interface. DOS commands are by far not the hardest things to memorize, but they're definitely not the easiest ones to get right either. Its lengthy text based commands are way too complicated for the casual user, so it's no surprise that people were easily won over by the lovable GUIs. One of the most prominent examples of an OS is the well-known Microsoft Windows OS. Windows for short, which is so easy to use that even small children and babies yes, babies, I really had not been joking earlier could work their way around it. It is usually the default OS of most PCs and is arguably one of the most popular OSs in existence. Did you know that Windows was originally touted as a mere shell for MS-DOS? Yes, the original Windows were merely add-ons meant to make MS-DOS more user-friendly. They weren't even called OSs back then. Windows was a mere shell, a mere layer over the original DOS OS. However, since the release and subsequent success of their Windows 95 OS, they had grown into a being of their own. It is actually rather ironic when you think about it for too long. The former DOS add-on now had DOS as its own add-on when it became an OS. The GUI built into the Windows OS is what makes it so easy to use, seeing as instead of typing lengthy commands, users now work with icons and menus to execute commands or activate functions. There are many kinds of menus. There are pull-down menus which resemble window shades when they are pulled down from the menu bar. There are pop-up menus which spring forth into action from the bottom of the screen or from a right mouse click. Two of Windows' main innovations are the Start button which keeps all your programs and documents in one place, and the Task bar that it sits upon which allows one to multitask by maximizing, minimizing, tiling, and snacking Windows as needed. Also, while DOS only allowed file names of 8 characters, Windows allows you to give names to files that are as long as 255 characters. Windows also supports plug-and-play components, which are automatically configured when they are plugged in. In this age of plug-and-play, now all the user has to do to install a new computer appendage is turn the computer on, plug the device in, leave the computer to process the device settings for a moment and use. Olay, pronounced in the same way as one would pronounce the Latin exclamation, is another one of the many Windows innovations. This makes one able to link documents to other documents no matter what format they may be in. This is the reason why one is able to embed pictures and videos into PowerPoint to insert Excel tables at work. There are three branches of Windows OSs, meant to serve three branches of users. First is the home consumer market, referred to as Windows 9X. It consists of Windows 95, 98, and ME, or ME. Secondly is the corporate market, which had been served by Windows NT and 2000. In 2001, Windows began serving both these two consumer branches with one product, namely Windows XP. 
This began their tradition of releasing both home and professional versions of their subsequent OS releases. They did this for XP, for Vista, and for Windows 7. They also introduced Windows CE for pocket computers and internet appliances. And all these will be tackled in more detail by the reporter coming up next.